Hey everyone, Steven here from Red Lessons and welcome back to another video. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And in this video, I'm going to take a moment to highlight a company that I recently discovered and the company is called Hot Parfums. Now, I just want to start things off by saying that this was actually sent to me uh, by the perfumer and I agreed to do kind of like a house spotlight, talking a little bit about the fragrances, what I think, the affordability, the availability, and so on and so forth. So this is a company called Hot Parfums and it's based out of Oakland, California. Now what I have here is the Extract the Parfum sample set. So these are 15 milliliter bottles and I think they all for the most part smell great. So I want to just very quickly give my honest take on the house, the company, the pricing, and what I think of it. So uh, they started off with sending me a card. That was the first thing that I discovered. And the card says, thank you, Stephen. We hope you enjoy your fragrances. And I do. So I want to take this moment to say thank you very much for sending this to me. I really do enjoy them. My fiance actually loves two of them. So I'm going to talk about them in a little bit. But it comes in this little box and uh, it says hot, hot parfums here at the top. And it has this pink wrapping paper on the inside and it says handcrafted for Steven. So I love the personalization with this, not just the box and the sticker, but also the card that was sent. That is absolutely awesome. So I actually did an unboxing on this. So if you would like to see a close up of what the box looks like, what the bottles look like, how well the atomizer works, so on and so forth, I'm going to leave a link down below and an annotation right here. But if you know, I had a chance to wear these for a little bit now so I want to give you my take and tell you which ones are my favorite and if I think they're worth picking up let's go ahead and start it off so this sample set I believe can be had for a little bit under a hundred dollars I could be totally wrong on that but the website is going to be down below it's hotparfums.com I know they vary from like a, a one ounce bottle you can get a one ounce bottle I think you can get some upwards of like a hundred milliliter bottle that's eau de parfum and that one I think sells for like a hundred and sixty something dollars so these are the extract de parfum uh, just a sample set now the first scent is called audacious and this one I'm not a huge fan of so I'm, I'm just gonna have to be honest here now it does remind me of another scent by um, Sebastian called immortal meadow it's a very green scent it has cucumbers it has mint it has a grassy note in there I think the grassy note prevails it's definitely an interesting composition I can't knock it for that and these are all very high quality fragrances so that's one thing that I'm really proud to say um, I actually have a favorite that would fit within this genre and it's by Eau de Tali and it's called Jardin du Poet. It's actually up there. You can't see it. I think it's cut off screen. Um, but that one is actually my favorite in that family or in that genre of notes. Uh, this one I think is a really great scent. It's just I prefer that one. So this one isn't entirely for me. But if you're looking for like a uh, 212 for men by Carolina Herrera but on crack, that's what this one is. So it's a really nice fresh green uplifting sort of a scent perfect for the spring and summer. The next one is called Socks or S-O-C-K-S and then in parentheses that's it. So the fragrance is called Socks that's it. Uh, I think all of these are pretty cool. They have these quirky titles and names to them which I think is really awesome as opposed to just naming the scent uh, Gardenia and Jasmine. You know I think that's kind of cheesy. Take the time to give your fragrance a name. That's why I think Tower's Lair du Desert Marocaine is so popular because he could have very easily called it Orus Root and Amber, but then it wouldn't have been, you know, as popular. It wouldn't have evoked a certain mindset. It wouldn't have transported you, right? It wouldn't have been as artistic. So I like the artistic take on these fragrances. The second one is probably my second favorite in this entire lineup. It's, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's my second favorite. And what you get from it is a lot of orange, like a really nice, rich orange note. And the thing with these is they're going to last a really, really long time. They're extract the parfum concentration. Now the orange one, it actually smells more like a candied orange. So if you can imagine like a life save, like an orange flavored Lifesavers candy, that's what this one reminds me of. My fiance actually really likes this one. She wore this one a couple of times since I started wearing them and both times it smelled great on her. The next one is called Don't Explain and Okay, this one, 
I'm also not too crazy about because it's rather floral. I just had to remind myself what it smells like. Now it has a lot of gardenia and it has gardenia absolute and it's a really nice gardenia note. It has jasmine, it also has narcissus. Now it has some imaginary notes in there, kind of like the company Imaginary Authors. Um, I know it has cigar smoke, it also has, uh, I don't think that's an imaginary note, it had another one in there, something to do with moonlight, I think, I don't remember. But it has cigar smoke, it also has musk and I definitely get that musk in the background and I also get a little bit of vanilla in the dry down but I do think that the florals in this one are a little bit too prominent so this one is called don't explain um, it's not my least favorite I think maybe the first one is my least favorite uh, but this one is also really really nice except I think it's more appropriate for women so I would love to smell this one on my fiance Jen I just don't think I would wear it myself although I have worn it for testing uh, the fourth to last one uh, is called sol besados uh, online, it's it's uh, on their website. It said Sol Besado without the S at the end. Here it says Sol Besados. So I think this is the official name with the S at the end. And this one is such a bright, sunny, as the name would imply. Sol is Spanish for sun, and it's a really nice coconut based scent. This is actually my fiance's favorite scent from this entire collection. Uh, not just on me, but also on her. It's a very nice tropical coconut fruity sort of a scent and what I like about it is, is that it's not a subtle coconut, it's an in-your-face coconut. Um, do I think it smells as much of a suntan lotion as um, Bronze Goddess by Estee Lauder? No. Do I think it smells as much of a suntan lotion scent as Fire Island by Bond Number 9? No, I don't think so. But I think it's a really nice interpretation of a suntan lotion scent. It has some sea kelp in it, which adds a slightly salty quality. So for that reason, it kind of reminds me of Longboard by Min New York, which is another favorite of mine. So I think I love this one and the Min New York scent at just as much. I love both of them. So this might actually be the one that I end up buying a full bottle of once this runs out, but it's a great sunny, tropical coconut sort of a scent with a slight salty quality. And the last one is actually uh, my favorite. The last one is my favorite. So this one is probably my second favorite or the, the orange one is probably my second favorite. Uh, but this one is my favorite just because it's so strange. And you know, I love strange scents. This one is called Ineffable. And the word ineffable itself means something that cannot be or that is difficult to be explained or described in words. And this one contains two notes, raspberry and fairy magic. Now, I do get a lot of raspberry from this one, and just like the orange one, it kind of has like a candied sort of a sort of a scent. It doesn't smell like a natural raspberry note, so I don't know what's added in there to give it that candied feel to it, maybe vanilla. It is definitely a sweet scent, but it doesn't smell as authentic of a fruit as, say, the coconut smells in this one. Like, the coconut in this one smells really authentic. You can really smell the meat of the coconut. Uh, in this one, it smells like a candied not synthetic, but artificial uh, sort of a raspberry note, if that even makes any sense. So for that reason, it does kind of remind me like a raspberry candy, but there's something else in the background there that's a little bit strange. It's, it's ineffable. It's hard for me to put my, my, my uh, finger on it, but I think it's an amazing scent. And longevity projection performance is amazing. It's extrait de parfum. Now, I haven't had an opportunity to try the eau de parfums. So the eau de parfums might not behave the same way on the skin as these do, but nonetheless, I think this is a fantastic company. I think it's a great indie house, really bringing you high quality ingredients in a high concentration for not so high of a price. If you buy the 100 ml Eau de Parfum, I think it's the 100 ml, you can get your hands on a bottle for 160 or $165, which I think is a really good price. It's very similar to Montal's prices, 100 ml in the $165 range or whatnot. So guys, there you go. That has been my opinion on this really cool indie house out of Oakland, California. If you own or have tried these scents, let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Hopefully you can get your hands on a sample set or maybe buy like a really small size of one of my two favorites which is socks that's it or ineffable these two are definitely my favorites but the coconut one is really good too then i would love to hear your opinion of what you think on it but until then guys please don't forget to rate and subscribe for future videos so once again this has been steven from red with another video thank you for watching